Our ancestors have been making leather from fish skin for thousands of years, and while still done in remote areas of the world, it has become a bit of a lost art. One of the main reasons it isn't done much today is purely down to the fact that generally fish have a much smaller surface area than what you can get from an animal hide such as a deer. So for some, it's just not worth the effort given the small amount of material you get from it. However, it's an important skill to know and one that we need to pass down generations so that it is not forgotten. Before we go on to making some leather from a fish skin, we need to catch the fish first. The south of England is one of the most famous areas in the world to catch rainbow trout. The Test Valley holds one of the most prestigious trout fishing rivers, the River Test, and also plays host to a number of fantastic stillwater lakes that hold giant rainbow and brown trout. We start our journey in one of these still waters, and it is here that we attempt to catch fresh trout for the campfire, as well as the beginning of our leather making journey. This lake is fed by a freshwater spring, and most of the ground here is chalk, which means that the water is incredibly clear. So we spent the first half an hour scouting the lake, looking for fish. Once we found them, it was a case of casting out the fly and trying to hook one. Well, we've barely been here, probably half an hour now. Still in the morning session and first trout of the day. Probably upwards of two and three quarters, maybe nearly three pounds, but lovely big tail on it. Uh, this is a rainbow trout, ideal to cook up. So we'll definitely take this one back. We've got a cool box with ice blocks in the car. So we're gonna get this one straight away on ice, keep it nice and fresh and hopefully eat it in the next, well, 24 hours or so. So that was caught on a gold head glister fly for those wondering. It's a, it's a pretty hot, sunny summer day in September and um, the, the trout are fairly near the surface of the water and that was on a, a straight retrieve so I didn't even like tweak it, the, the line, it was just a straight winding in to actually move on and it just switched the, uh, the fish on. So lovely fish and we'll carry on fishing and see what else we can get. So as uh, we're going to carry on fishing, we're not going to this, we're not going to put this, we don't want to leave this spot so um, just going to hang this fish in the water with what we call a stringer. They can, you can get metal ones, plastic ones, but essentially it goes through the gills of the fish, like that. It comes around, it slots in, and then that yellow clasp just locks it off. And that's then holding onto the fish now, like that. And this yellow stake is gonna go in the ground and it's bright colored so you can see it. So that fish will go in the water, just here in the corner, push the stake in. And then that's going to keep it nice and fresh before we, uh, so we can fish some more. After a few hours fishing, we stopped for some lunch and then headed back out to see if we could catch one or two more fish to take home. Happy with the fish we had caught, it was time to start the process of making leather from the skin. To start with, we needed to skin the fish, but in order not to waste any of the meat, we took fillets off the fish which we will later use for cooking in a different video. Once the skin had been removed from the fillet, we needed to descale the fish. To do this, we just ran the blade of the knife against the grain of the scales and they just popped off. It's a fairly time consuming process, but it will make the end product much more supple. Once the skin had been descaled, we took the fish home and removed any remaining flesh that was left on the inside of the skin leaving just the clean, white membrane. We then soaked these in cold, soapy water to kill off any bacteria and wash off any of the scales. Now it was time to begin the tanning process. We're going to process these fish skins using a variety of different methods. One method is an oil-based tan, and the other is a bark tan. For this first skin, we made an oil tan solution 
which consisted of two egg yolks, one teaspoon of vegetable oil, and one tablespoon of water. I soaked the skins in this solution for around 30 minutes, working them with my hands to make sure the oil penetrated into the fibres of the skin. After 30 minutes, we wrung out the skins and decided to peg these out to some wood in the pallet cabin. Here they could air dry, but also be out of reach from any prying animals that might take them. We left them for 24 hours. Whilst waiting for them to dry, I put together a small jig, which would be used for making the leather more supple. It's pretty simple, just a small round stick with two posts nailed in each side. Hit these posts deep into the ground so that the jig doesn't wobble and then it's ready to work the skin on. The next day, this skin was crispy and hard, so I soaked it in water for five minutes just to rehydrate it and make it more supple. Then I went over to the jig and worked the inside layer of the skin. I worked the fish skin from tail to head, making sure not to focus too much on one area as the friction causes heat and the heat can rip the fish skin. At this stage, the skin could stretch and was beginning to feel like leather. I spent an hour working the skin in different areas and angles until it was dry. However, I did notice that with this skin, a lot of the inner membrane had been scraped away, which made the skin very thin. So when it did dry, it felt brittle and difficult to make supple and flexible, still usable but just not as supple as I would have wanted. For the other skins, I wanted to bark tan them. For this, I chipped off the bark of a few oak logs which had been felled recently. For the bark solution, I only needed the outer bark of the oak, so I was careful not to cut too deep with the axe. I gathered up the bark chippings and put them in a cast iron pan and poured in some boiling water. I then set this over the fire to boil away for about an hour. This released all the tannins from the bark into the water, which creates the bark tan solution. We then sieved out the bark and poured this into a container. Once the solution had cooled, we soaked the skins in it and put this in the cabin to sit for a week. I needed to stir the solution every day, otherwise there will be a buildup of mould on the surface. After a week, I took the skins out and it was instantly clear that the bark tan solution had penetrated the skins. These skins were already much more supple than the oil tanned ones and they took on a really nice deep brown colour from the bark. This time, before working them over the jig, I wanted to re-oil them. So I put them in a solution of two egg yolks, some vegetable oil and a small drop of natural soap and half a litre of water. I then worked this solution into them for around 10 to 15 minutes. After that, I rinsed them out, I put one of them scale side down on the flat wood in the cabin, and I left this to dry overnight, ready to be worked soft the next day. For the other one, I took it over to the jig and began working it soft back and forth. After about 20 minutes, it started to dry. I then decided to work it by hand. This felt much more natural, and I was able to work the harder, stiffer areas of the skin. It also meant that the natural oils from my hands were also working into the skin. I did this for over an hour. It's important to note that I only worked the inside of the skin, not the scale side. I didn't want to damage the scale side by working on it too much. Once the skin felt like it was getting dry again, I used some natural leather balm and worked it again through my hands for another 30 minutes. This time, I put some of the leather balm on the scale side too, to help make it more supple. Now it was really getting supple and looking much more like leather. This was the final stage for this fish skin, and I left it to dry overnight, and it still stayed supple the next day. With the skin that was left to dry overnight in the cabin, it was fairly stiff and crinkly the next day. So again, I worked it into the oil solution for about 20 minutes and let it take on the natural oils. I then did the same process as the previous bark tan skin, except this time, when it began to dry, I decided to take some sandpaper to the inside of the skin to work smooth some of the membrane that was there. 
in the hope that removing some of this will make it more supple. After 20 minutes of sanding, I applied a thick coat of leather balm and began working it again through my hands to make it more supple. Again, I did this for an hour. What's interesting about fish skin is that the fibres of the skin are woven in a uniform pattern, whereas the fibres in an animal skin are woven together in an irregular pattern. This is due to the environment that they live in. Fish live and swim in water, so there is equal pull and pressure on all sides of their body as they are near enough weightless when in the water. This means their skin isn't being pulled in one particular direction. Whereas with animal hides such as deer, the thickest part of their hide is along the back and the neckline, because this is the point where their skin hangs from and receives the most pressure. So gravity is pulling the hide down towards the earth. Underneath the belly of the animal, there is less pressure being pulled down, so the fibres are not as tightly woven here. Interestingly, fish skin leather with its regular fibre network is actually stronger than what an animal hide would be. If you had a fish skin that was the same thickness as a deer hide, the fish skin would technically be stronger all around as it has a more uniform weave. But fish skins are normally far thinner than animal hides due to the nature of the environment that they live in. With the skins now fully tanned, it was time to get a fire going and to cook up the remaining trout that we had left. It would be interesting to see Dad's reaction to the leather that I had made. Ever had bacon wrapped trout before, Dad? No, nope. this is a new one on me. Is it a first? Definitely a first, yeah. Better than uh, pancetta wrapped trout? Oh, the old pancetta, yeah. <laughs> but you did mention this, uh, what's a bone tonight? I took too big a yeah. piece, I've got a bit of bone there, but. That's right. Um, yes, I think that's cooked, don't you? Yeah, that's flaking off that. So there's a bit of a. Not a Cajun spice, but there's a seasoning, a dry rub I put on the uh, bacon. So that'll have a nice tang to it. We've got rosemary, herb. Peel so that, look at that skin, peel, peel it back. It peels back, but you can feel, it's easy for people to stuff there. And then there's lemon inside with rosemary as well. You can do no more You can't get more fresh than this. Normally you'd have it on like your potatoes and stuff, you know? But we've just gone straight trout. So what was that sort of sputtering? Uh, it was a honey butter, just a simple honey butter. Watch for the bones. Thoughts? I'm tasting the bacon. I'm liking the bacon with the honey butter. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I could have been salt and pepper, but I don't think you need it because that would have probably taken the... The seasoning's already got the salt it, and pepper. It's there. Mm. 
you can really, because um, it's smoked bacon, how much does that impart into the trout, the smoked flavour? Because that's way yeah, smokier than normal yeah, trout. Is. For, for rainbow trout, yeah. it is, yeah. So really, this episode isn't actually about cooking of the trout, it's about uh, catching the trout, processing it, trying to get that skin and make it into leather. But essentially, it's a bit, it's kind of part of the whole process is eating the trout as well. So yeah, you're not wasting anything, that's the thing. anything at all. And that's what our ancestors would have done, is they would have, they would have caught fish, they wouldn't have just discarded the skin and everything like that. They'd have used everything. And where I've used that oil tan mix, like I said in the voiceover, that's where they would have probably used the brains of the fish um, and brain tanned it because most times when you're brain tanning, whichever animal, fish, mammal, anything like that, they say that the, the size of the brain is in correlation with the amount that you can tan, it is enough basically to tan the size of that that fish or that animal. The size of the brain? So, yeah. So I'm, so not you're... Do, I'm not going to do with much tanning, <laughs> am I? So you mean you might be a bit dry and withered, Dad? Yeah, we've been shriveled up right now. <laughs> but that's um, yeah. So that's what they say. But obviously, trying to extract a trout brain, um, especially from the the rainbow trout, you might be alright with the salmon, but it is quite hard. They're small, tiny little brains oh, yeah, they've yeah. got. Uh, but it does work. But essentially, that's what the egg and the oil and that that veg oil. That's what it's imparting. Is it's trying to act like the brain tanning of what you would do. But also, they say the row of the fish. Yeah. So especially with salmon and things like that, they would use the roe of the fish and that would act as that kind of oily agent. Essentially, it's like um, a moisturiser, really. It's, mo it's just getting that, that moisture, that almost emulsifier, into the, the skin to hydrate it so that it doesn't go all dried and crinkled. But that's what we're trying to do. It's something a bit different. Um, we're obviously here in the tiny cabin, which we put up recently. Yeah. And, um, yeah, cooked on the fire pit outside and it's been really nice. We've had good weather. Fire pit's worked well. It's got a um, big steel plate underneath it yeah dad put a steel plate underneath so the heat just bounces back up and that's that actually helped especially when you're doing something like baking like we were with the trout where we baked essentially baked it in the tinfoil it's um it's keep it kept an even temperature pumping back up into the into the meat so it's really good i'm pleased with that it tastes nice mm. um and then i'm going to show dad the three different types of well the same skin of the trout skin but the three different methods that i used and i want to see his opinion on which one he thought was best. Cheers, Dad. Cheers. Good fishing. Good Hopefully, eating. Yeah. I'll put a link to Dad's channel in the description below. I'm going to grab some leather, Dad, and some skin and see which one you prefer. Yeah. So, Dad, I've been busy these past few days. Well, this week, really. Here are three fish skins from the trout that we caught. I don't have to eat them, do I? No, you don't have to eat them. Just have a look at them and tell me what you think of each one of them. What are your initial impressions? Well, as soon as I touched it, I won't say which one. Yeah. It's fish. <laughs> yeah. That's rigid, that's very, it feels like it's paper, but you know, I know it's very strong, look, because I've stuck hooks to them when I'm fishing them with, it, with trout as bait, it's really good bait. I know it's tough. But does it feel like leather? No, this this is weird, because it looks nothing like trout. Yeah. I'd say, this is a God's honest truth, right, if, somebody, honest. if somebody said, Graham, this is a piece of python skin, snake skin yeah i would honestly believe them even without the head i think that's so i did a good job yeah that is that is that, how well, close to which is the closest to leather out oh, of this, all those the, three the, 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 this well that's bigger this yeah. is a bigger one oh no it's weird <laughs> that's now you're conning me that's leather it's not it smells like leather doesn't it that is so strange now smell this skin one yeah that one and that smells more like fish that's me <laughs> <laughs> so <sighs> Totally. No, totally that's, I don't process. think. I think you're tricking me. No. I think that's leather. Honest to God, and look at the back of it. Honest to God, Dad, I'm not. I kid you not. That is one of the rainbow trout we caught. That is weird. Honestly, I'm not joking. That people. is hundred percent. I've never seen these before. No, I've just. Well, we have because we put the net. Yeah, but I just showed you those now, haven't I? Live on camera. That is hundred percent. I would. I would have. If you said that's leather or snakeskin. I would have, I would have believed you. To be honest, that is so tough, and it. But I don't. Why does it smell like leather then? Why is it it's a fish for God's sake? <laughs> well, you can so people know. There's the difference. Yeah. Whichever. I that's think it. That's the, that's the rainbow trout skin. They're both. They're both they're rainbow, both trout. rainbow trout. Yeah, you can see they're both rainbow trout skins. Yeah. This one you can see has got that rainbow stripe down it, which gives the rainbow trout, and you see that's the one we caught. So, and I can also see the little sort of squares through that. Yeah. You know if you. If you hold that, you, do, you it's I translucent. I know it's translucent. You can I was see saying the scales. That, if you yeah. hold it against a big front Well, this light, is the thing I was saying with this. Light, if you, you look, guys, 
This is the same. I think, Dad, with this one, because we both um, we both fleshed these or defleshed them. Yeah. We took too much off this. Yeah. Right. So there's no membrane layer, and if you look, it's translucent. It's see-through. Whereas see that, and that's why it's not supple. That's why it's so brittle. This, even up against the light, it's much more it. solid because we left the membrane layer on it. Now, here's the three, here's the process I did, just so you know, Dad, and for viewers at home, yeah. I'll lay them out there. This is the order I did it. So all of these, oh, all of these, yeah, actually, where is They're, it? Right there, right at the top of the carling can. Okay. Most inflation. That is yeah. almost That's rawhide. Right. That's like rawhide. That's rigid. Yeah, you can so, see that. Once we fl let me just show the guys the order of what we did. Once we defle we skinned it, we defleshed it, or fleshing it, whatever you call want to call it. Um, then we dipped it in that oil. All three of these went in that oil tan solution, which was the egg yolks, uh, the bit of veg oil, and some water. So all three went in that. This one is hung to dry naturally straight from that. And how crinkly is that? That I mean, yeah, look I mean, at the memory of it. It's, just, it's think, rock hard. It's like a dog yeah, tube, isn't it's it? It's almost yes, it is. That's all material. But I think this could have been pinned apart yeah so we hung it to air dry we hung didn't it we? to air dry and we put it in here yeah it came in the pallet cabin and naturally and that's how it's too, hung yeah. and it's dried like that it's dried too quickly now i can still work that back into leather a bit but again we i think we fleshed too much too hard too much of the layer and it's uh, ripped it off and also that's got a hole there what would happen if you put that back in a water solution it would go supple it? it would go supple again could you then work yeah i could work it, it again yeah it, i could work it again definitely then the next stage was this test now this one was also oil tanned, oil put in the oil tan solution, uh, yeah. and then it was yeah, and then it was dried, and then it was worked, and also I used sandpaper on the back of it. But like I say, I think this one was almost destined to fail from the start because there was no membrane on the back. We we took it off too thin, and if you can see, it's so translucent. However, going in the oil tan, it keeps that colour, and you said straight away rainbow trout. Rainbow yeah. trout. So these two were put in your oak bark, the oak dad, that the oak solution. tree you had yeah, come down. Solution, they yeah. went into the oak bark solution. And the difference, the major difference you could notice as well was this one was crinkly on the edges, right? Yep. It's still supple like yep. leather and it smells like leather. And you can see it's still got the fish scales and the skin on it. And there's that rainbow line coming down from the rainbow trout. But it was still a bit rigid on the edges. Whereas this one, look, it's just supple as anything, isn't it, Dad? It yeah, just yeah. folds. Yes. I honestly got thought it was a piece of leather. It's amazing, isn't it? This actually feels like leather. I'm proper impressed with that one. So the, main, the only difference between these two, they soaked in the solution for a week. I then put them back, re-oiled them in the uh, egg yolk solution. And then I worked them with my hands and over the... The bark jig, the, you know, the oh, yeah, uh, drying yeah, jig, it. I call it, yeah. the drying jig. To soften it. To yeah. soften it. And I softened them with my hands and then I applied some leather balm as well. Now, the major difference between these two is that this one, I actually, after it went into the egg, to egg and oil, so I call it the oil tan solution, I put it on a flat thing over there, yeah. flat piece of wood, and I let it dry naturally overnight. I like plastered it down flat. Oh, you pinned it And I down. let it, yeah, but not pinned it, I just, no, it flat, sucked on weight, itself. Yeah. On it. yeah. And I let that do itself and it dried overnight. Yeah. Whereas this one, I worked soft straight away. Yeah. So that second drying, second oil, and letting it dry naturally and then re-oiling the third time made a massive difference, I think, to the suppleness. And then finally, the major difference is I didn't sand, use sandpaper on the back of that one to get rid of most of that thicker membrane. Like a sort of dental where the yeah, scales were. Yeah, exactly. No, no, the scales are that side. Yeah. This side, on the, on the inside, inside yeah. I used sand, I did use, didn't use sandpaper on that, so that's maybe why it's a little bit more rigid. Whereas this, if you look, it's like suede, isn't it? It's yeah, properly. Yeah, it's weird. I took that off, that layer, which is why it's so much lighter, and that is just awesome, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think many people would know that's fish skin. I 100% didn't, you know. But it's, it it's almost like trick. a snake, isn't it? Yeah, like snake skin. Yeah. That's what I would think. And so we got to go and get a snake. Where can we get an anaconda? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it, folks. So you've got one on the plate. You've got a couple of bits of leather here, which we can definitely work with, and I can still make something of that. I'm going to make something with these, so stay tuned on but the channel. You can soften these as well. Don't yeah. yeah, but sure. that is talk about using the resources of what you got. Yeah. That is as good as it gets, really, isn't it? That's the best piece of leather, and stay tuned to the channel, guys, because I'm going to make something from this. That's what it's all about. That's what TA Outdoors and TA Fishing is all about. Our channels discovering, is it? experimenting, discovering and most importantly, trying to keep the knowledge alive, right? Yeah, That's what yeah. it's all been about, is inspiring people to get outdoors, keep the knowledge alive and pass it on. We're not experts by no means, but 
you know, primitive man probably wasn't an expert to begin with. He was forced to learn. And then they got experts by the knowledge that was passed down to them and the skills that were passed down to them. And once his knowledge is gone, it's gone. Exactly. You know, that's the yeah. thing. So we almost, I always say this, we owe it to our ancestors. Yeah, because I wouldn't have known. I would know we would have known how to well, fish skin, I'd throw it away. Yeah. Eat the fish, yes, I'm all into yeah. that. Throw the skin away. Yeah. I didn't realise you could make things. I'd be interested to see what you're going to so, come up with. Yeah, I'm going to do a little something from it. But obviously, the, the, and this is why they didn't, they don't use it as much nowadays, because you've got all the effort I put through to make that, mm. Or you've got an entire cow where yeah. you can make a ridiculous volume of leather. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to profit and business. And yeah. back, even back then when they were trading, you know, uh, furs for animals and fish and things like that. When it comes to leather and it, it goes down to, to money at the end of the day, doesn't it? And to, does, resu yeah. to resources, to what people would what trade other, and what other. it's worth. That's yeah. probably nowhere near worth what a cow would be worth. No, but, it, but <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, that would be, you could maybe make up. A knife handle out of it, the shaft or yeah, something. Yeah, or a little a a small pouch, just a yeah. small pouch for, for spices or something like that. Stay tuned to the channel, folks. That, that'll, I will... sti that'll, sti stitch, yeah. that'll, that'll stitch. Sew. That'll stitch. That'll stitch. That's so sew. supple. It's so supple and flexible. But also, what I like about the bark tan is that look at that colour it imparts mm. on it. I, don't get me wrong. I like the natural rainbow trout look because it's a pretty pattern. But at the same time, I really like the dark chestnut sort so there's of There's no leather. dyes, nothing in there. No dye. That's, that's natural. natural. That's the oak tannins yeah, from the oak that. bark. Yeah. So that's natural dye. It's, it's, it's the dye as well. Yeah. Now you can, there's so many, way, guys, so many ways of tanning skins in general. Deer hides, um, fish skins, there's a load of different methods. Um, you can also smoke them as well over a fire for, for about three to four hours. That's another way. And the smoke mm -hmm. would actually make it more waterproof. And this is why we're primitive man where they had those, those sort of whalebone structures and things like that, their houses, they would have skins all over the roof, deer hides and things. Yeah, yeah, They'd have a constant fire going yeah. and that fire actually... Curing it. Yeah, it's curing yeah. the skins each time and it's making them more and more waterproof each time and it's killing off any bacteria and bugs. There's bacteria on the inside of the Well, they do it with meat, the skins. don't they? they, do, yeah, they, they know historically they used to do that with meat. So you can smoke them as well. So there's loads of different ways. Either way, this is our way of uh, having a crack at it and um, we're gonna, I'm going to do some more definitely down the line. Um, it links with fishing. Obviously, yes. subscribe to Dad's channel, More TA fish. Fishing. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Tune in next week where we'll be doing something cool and fun. And um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.